So if you've been on the channel for any extended period of time, you would know that I am what we like to call a Sanzo enjoyer. I try to bring this servant to my team comps whenever I can, because not only is she a good DPS servant, even better now after her buff, but she's also a pretty good support type servant as well. And I think it's really telling that I have this single target servant at like bond eight, despite the fact that I mainly use AoE servants, right? Because I'm either farming or just a lot of the servants that I really like, like say Gilgamesh, just happen to be really good boss killing servants that are also AoEs. So I never really find times to really crack out my single targets, but she's just always in there because I'm like, well, I can slot her in there because of her third skill or her second skill is really good at keeping the heat off of other people. Or you can just slot her into farming comps because of that absolutely massive battery. So as a resident Sanzo enjoyer, I'm like, man, I got to go ahead and just talk about how good she is, especially after her buff. I also wanted to go ahead and just kind of reaffirm how good this servant is because I think she's a very legitimate choice for the five star ticket that's going to be coming out for the anniversary. If you're unaware, maybe you're a little bit newer. There is a free five star ticket that is going to be coming out during the anniversary in a couple months here. It doesn't have any of like the crazy limited servants on there, but there are still a lot of very strong options that are on that ticket. And I think Sanzo is definitely one of them. If I didn't already have Sanzo at like NP3, I think I would legitimately consider picking her up, but you know, I think I've got enough copies. Although going for like NP4 to get closer to NP5 is definitely very tantalizing. But on that note, I do want to say you probably should not summon on this banner because she is on every single banner. And if you do really want Sanzo, you just got to wait like two months, I believe it is until anniversary drops and you could pick her up for absolutely free and she still performs very well at even NP1. Obviously NP2, 3 is going to be a lot better, you're going to be doing a lot more damage but she'll still do absolutely fine at NP1. So if you are really wanting this servant, try to restrain yourself for like the next two months. But before we actually begin, if you have not already, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily FGO content. Also, if you want to see me play FGO and other games live, I do that every weekday starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on my Twitch, which is linked down in the description down below. So make sure you go peep that as well. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just start diving into Sanzo's kit, starting off with her hits. Now, at least for the time when Sanzo came out, she had a very interesting kit because usually a lot of the casters at the time were like triple arts deck and then they had like a support NP and that was kind of most of the casters that were in the game. But Sanzo has the same triple arts deck, but she's got a pretty strong buster single target NP, right? So that made her a little bit different. The triple arts deck is very strong in her case because even though the hits are very low, she can still arts brave chain with herself or with like say Merlin or Waver, whoever you're going to be using her with to still gain some NP because even though she's got 0.82% NP gain because her hits are really low, you're not going to get like that much NP back on them realistically unless you're like critting or something. Her third skill definitely does help and she does also have a way to massively charge her NP. We'll talk about that in just a second. But the triple arts deck definitely does come in handy when it comes to actually just giving her those little bits of extra NP. The only unfortunate thing is that she cannot bust her brave chain with herself. I'd like to maybe see her get a buff in the future, kind of like the Artoria Saber buff where she's able to change her card types. Maybe changing all of her cards into buster cards for a turn would be really, really cool on someone like this. That way she could also reach those like really high damaging turns that a lot of these other servants are also able to reach. But aside from that, there's nothing else really notable going on here. She is a very old servant, so a lot of her hits aren't super great, except for that extra attack, six attacks over there. I mean, you guys know five is the gold standard, but she's got six. Somebody at DW knew that when they made this servant that I was gonna absolutely love them. So they're like, you know what? Let's toss him just a little bit of a bone, give her that extra hit. And I absolutely love him for it. But like most of these older servants, you're not gonna find a lot of value in the hits unless they're like specific old servants, like say Okita or Jack. You're gonna find a lot of the value in their skills. So moving over to some of her skills, skill one is an 80% battery, which is still absolutely ludicrous to this day with a 20% NP damage buff for one turn on a seven turn cooldown. This has aged so well for Sanzo because it either just allows her to pretty much fire her NP immediately in a boss fight and do some really good damage because of the NP damage buff, 
which has also aged pretty well because if you don't know, different buff types in FGO multiply into each other and Merlin nor Koyanskaya, who are like the main buster supports, don't offer NP damage. They offer a buster buff, Merlin offers an attack buff, Koyan Sky can give you some different special damage mods, but they don't offer an NP damage buff, so it's just a different damage type that they don't offer that really let her do a lot of damage and it really lets her shine. But it also just made her really good for like the very odd nodes that they've just been making nowadays. I mean, the fact that they've been doing like one, two, three nodes or a three, two, one node. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, maybe if you're a newer player, that's the type of enemies you're fighting, right? Like if you have three enemies, two enemies, one enemy or one enemy, two enemies, one more enemy, I don't know, something like that. It makes her really good at clearing those very big beefy enemies because she just has a 80% battery. Even if you're using an art servant to farm, just a wayward charisma from a different Castoria will give her an extra 30% and put her above 100% just with her own battery and just anybody else's charisma. Even a waiver being used with his attack and defensive skill can put her at 100%, which is just very, very strong. It just makes her very good at clearing some of those big, annoying enemies that might be messing up your farming setups. And funny enough, Sanzo does function as like a really good single target for those very odd farming nodes because of all three of her skills, but she still functions as a good DPS servant that you could bring to just absolutely crack some bosses. Moving over to her second skill, this is the one that just recently got buffed. It comes with the wombo combo of a taunt plus damage cut, meaning that she can effectively buy you a turn of damage because she's not really going to take any major hits with that 1500 damage cut. And so if you're just waiting for, say, your Merlin or your Koyan Sky to get that one last skill to come back up and then you can start popping off again and you just need that extra turn, which I know we've all found ourselves in at least once where you just need that extra turn before you can actually beat the boss you're just waiting for a skill to come back up or you're just like a little bit shy of getting one of your supports NPs that'll let you pop back off it's very good for that but the attack buff functions very well in helping Sanzo's damage because her turn one damage is going to be really insane because you got her own attack buff multiplying into her own NP damage buff but originally once that NP damage buff that only lasts for one turn did fall off her damage would fall off as well, but now that she has the attack buff, her damage doesn't fall off as much. I actually did the calcs for it in one of my recent videos talking about this buff in particular, and it's still very, very nice. The funny thing is this is also really good if you're going to use her in farming setups where you need to clear out like one big enemy. She's also passing off an attack buff to one of your allies so they can also do more damage. So again, she's not only clearing the boss for you or some random big guy that you have to take out, but then she's also passing off some attack buffs to make sure that your farmer is doing even more damage. And even on top of that, if we look at her third skill, she's even passing along some extra NP gen and some crit star drop rate, 30% on both for three turns that are very nice if you're using her in like an arts or a quick setup in particular where that extra little bit of NP gain and some of those very weird nodes can be crucial in making sure that you gen the correct amount of NP to finish out the node which again this is why I love using Sanzo so much she can come in absolutely obliterate somebody pass off some attack and NP gain so my looper can just absolutely crush the rest of the farming node it makes her very very convenient to use but again in more difficult content she also gives that debuff immunity for a turn which can ensure that like your different supports are not getting stunned charmed anything annoying like that because you pretty much want them to be up all the time so they can keep well supporting your team and the extra NP gain is also very nice because you want someone like, say, Merlin to always be firing his NP for all of the really insane buffs that it gives. And Koyanskaya, even though if she's not your main DPS, is not going to be doing a whole lot of damage, you still do want her to fire her NP because it does give you NP back on her overcharge effect. So that's also very nice. The extra crit star generation can also be nice for Koyanskaya in particular because she is an assassin and it will help out her star gen. So it just synergizes really well with the people you're gonna use her with anyway. I guess the only thing that I think is a little bit lacking is the NP. It's a 12 hit single target buster NP that pierces defense and reduces the enemy's critical attack chance by 80 to 120% for one turn. This isn't the worst old NP I've ever seen because since you're reducing their critical attack chance by such a massive amount, you can basically guarantee that you're going to bop them with that NP. And this is really only useful in more difficult content, by the way, but you're going to bop them with that NP and then they're not going to clap you back with crits, or at least they really shouldn't 
for that turn, which can be nice because some bosses can do some really insane crit damage and just obliterate one of your characters out of nowhere. The pierce defense is probably one of the piercing effects, like when it comes to like sure hit or pierce invincibility or well pierce defense, it's probably the one that comes up the least, I feel. But it's still very, very nice to have for those very annoying bosses that just like to get very thick. Sanzo can just absolutely get through them and smack her with those hands. Overall, I think this is a very, very solid servant for someone who is just on every single banner and that you'll be able to pick up for free during the anniversary. This servant is absolutely nuts. I mean, compared to some of the other limited gacha servants, you know, there are better options. But again, considering that you can just pick this servant up at any time, it's kind of crazy. Like, she's kind of nuts when you look, look at her in that perspective. And then even then, I suppose if I really think about it, even though there are technically better options over Sanzo, there aren't a whole lot of better options. I mean, the kit that she has going for herself is always just going to be relatively good just because a big battery plus good damage plus a lot of support that she can offer the party is just a lot of stuff that'll always generally be relevant unless there's a wild shift in how we actually play FGO, which... I don't see that happening for a good couple of years. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know if you think I'm gassing up Sanzo a little bit too much. I think for a non-limited servant, I'm pretty appropriately rating her. Because again, you can run into this servant on any banner. And Lord knows that I have done that three different times. <laughs> but again, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Late, guys.